Welcome to the Reading the Bible Daily with Dave podcast. This podcast is devoted to helping increase your daily exposure to God's Word with a short scripture reading and brief commentary on key ideas, themes, and theology in each chapter. Now please join your host, Dave Jenkins, for today's episode. Well, welcome back to the Reading the Bible Daily with Dave podcast. My name is Dave, and I'm the host for this show. Today is February 12th, and today we're going to look at Genesis 43. Just as a reminder, every day I read one chapter from God's Word. So today we're going to read from Genesis 43, and then I offer a very brief explanation of key ideas, themes, and the theology very briefly. My goal is to get you into God's Word for about 5 to 20 minutes every day. So let's get to our reading today from Genesis 43. Genesis 43 says this, Now the famine was severe in the land, and when they had eaten the grain that they had brought from Egypt, their father said to them, Go again, buy us a little food. But Judah said to him, The man solemnly warned us, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you will send our brother with us, we will go down and buy your fo- buy you food. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, You will not see my face unless your brother is with you. Israel said, Why did you treat me so badly as to tell the man that you had another brother? They replied, The man questioned us carefully about ourselves and our kindred, saying, Is your father still alive? Do you have another brother? What we told him was an answer to these questions. Could we in any way know that he would say, Bring your brother down? And Judah said to Israel, his father, Send the boy with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and you and also our little ones. I will be a pledge of his safety. From my hand you shall require him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever. If we had not delayed, we would now have returned twice. And then then their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Take some of the choice fruits of the land and in your bags and carry a present down to the man, a little balm and a little honey, gum, myrrh, pistachio nuts, and almonds. Take double the money with you. Carry back with you the money that was returned in the mouth of your sacks. Perhaps it was an oversight. Take also your brother and arise and go to the man. May God Almighty grant you mercy before the man, and may he send you back your other brother and Benjamin. And as for me, if I am bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. And so the men took this present, and they took double the money with them and Benjamin. They arose and went down to Egypt and stood before Joseph. And when Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, Bring the men into the house and slaughter an animal and make make ready, for the men are to dine with me at noon. The man did as Joseph told him and brought them into Joseph's house. And the men were afraid because they, they were brought to Joseph's house. And they said, It is because of the money which was replaced in our sacks the first time that we are brought in so that he may assault us and even fall upon us to make us servants and to seize our donkeys. And so they went up to the steward of Joseph's house and spoke with him at the door of the house and said, Oh, my Lord, we we came down to the first time to buy food. And when we came to the lodging place, we opened our sacks, and there was each man's money in the mouth of a sack, our money in full weight. And so we have brought it again with us, and we have brought our other money down with us to buy food. We do not know who put our money in our sacks. He replied, Peace to you. Do not be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has put treasure in your sacks for you. I received your money, and then he brought Simeon out to them. And when the man had brought the men into Joseph's house and given them water, and they, wa- they washed their feet, and, and when he had given their donkeys fodder, they prepared the present for Joseph's coming at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought into the house to him the present that they had with him and bowed down to him to the ground. And he inquired about their welfare and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom you spoke? Is he still alive? And they said, Your servant, our father, is well. He is still alive. And they bowed their heads and prostrated themselves. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your youngest brother of whom you spoke to me? God be gracious to you, my son. 
And then Joseph hurried out, for his compassion grew warm for his brother, and he sought a place to weep, and he entered his chamber and went there. And then he washed his face and came out, and controlling himself, he said, serve the food. They served him by himself and, and them by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate uh, with him by themselves, because the Egyptians could not eat with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination to the Egyptians. And they sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth. And the men looked at one another in amazement. Portions were taken to them from Joseph's table, but Benjamin's portion was five times as much as any of theirs. And they drank and were merry with him. Well, this is our reading today from Genesis 43. You know, Jacob was afraid when money was found in the sacks of grain from Egypt, as we see in Genesis 42, 35. But he did not fear divine retribution like his sons did. Scholars suggest he was afraid his sons had planned some kind of coup. His favorite son, Joseph, disappeared after looking after these brothers, and as we've seen in chapter 37. And now they want to take his beloved Benjamin, Rachel's other son, into the desert. And in fact, moreover, Jacob's sons returned from Egypt with the money, but no Simon. Jacob likely surmised that the brothers sold Simon into slavery and suspected his sons would remove Benjamin, who, like Joseph, would not champion any attempt attempt to supplant their father well what we see here is jacob's focus on himself supports this contention he was indifferent to his sons by leah claiming benjamin was the only son he had after joseph's demise in genesis 42 38 he was refusing to live in the present preferring preferring to dwell on the memory of rachel his favorite wife well, our chapter tells us today that Jacob saw their attempt to save themselves from the Pharaoh's court as a personal affront in Genesis 43.6. He cared little for the safety of any son Rachel did not bear. And yet, our chapter today informs us that the famine's severity and even Judah's selfless pledge prevented him from holding Benjamin back in verse 1. Judah steps forward as the leader of the clan and refuses to go back to Egypt without his youngest brother. Twice he tells his father that they have been warned not to return without Benjamin. And so if all the brothers do not go into the land of the Nile, none of them can go according to verse, verses 4 through 5 of our chapter today. You see, Judah is the oldest son. He's still in Jacob's favor and the logical choice to head the expedition. And yet Judah's age is not his most important qualification to lead the others. Seeing that his father's concern to preserve Benjamin alive must be satisfied, he steps forward and even makes himself the guarantee of his brother's safety in verses 8 through 9 of our chapter today. This is very risky. It's, it's a man move for Judah to, to make, for he is putting his life on the line for his brother. It is model behavior for the righteous ruler, seen most prominently in the life of Jesus, Judah's greatest son, through King David, according to Matthew 1.1, 1, 1, who laid down his life for his brothers, according to John 10.11. Now, what Judah's actions show him to be far different from the man who rejected Tamar and sold Joseph into slavery in Genesis 37 through 38. Now he is a servant of the living God. Matthew Henry says Judah, to show his repentance, would make some amends for the irreparable injury he had done to him, Jacob, by doubling down his care and concern for Benjamin. You see, those sorry for their sins try to make amends for the harm that they have done. Is there somebody to whom you need to make amends today? Jacob's refusal to entrust Benjamin to the care of his other sons is not unexpected. In the first place, Jacob was a former cheater himself, as we've seen in Genesis 25, and could rightly suspect that his sons were up to something in asking to take his beloved son to Egypt. After all, apples do not fall too far from the tree. Now, Jacob knew that his sons had major character flaws. He had witnessed them firsthand. Reuben stole his concubines in, in Genesis 35. Simon and Levi lied to the Shechemites before slaughtering them in Genesis 34. And Judah stretched the truth when he promised his son Shelah to his daughter-in-law uh, Tamar. 
In fact, his favorite son Joseph had been killed, or so he thought, on his way to check up on his brothers in Genesis 37. And given the hatred of his other son, Joseph's demise could rightly be seen as more than a coincidence in Genesis 42:36. Israel had no good reason to expect his sons would ensure Benjamin's safety in the land of the Nile. Yet, as Paul later wrote, a believer must risk trusting a formerly untrustworthy person if the sinner gives evidence of conversion and repentance in Philemon 8-20. And there is some proof that Jacob's sons have changed years after Joseph disappeared. You know, we, we look at Judah, who we've been talking about, who, who had been known for selfishly neglecting Tamar in, in chapter 38, who now puts his own life on the line to secure Benjamin's relief and even rescue Simeon in Genesis 43, 8 through 10. And Judah's own words, they convince Jacob, and he permits his boys to even take Benjamin with them to Egypt in our chapter today. And so in trusting his sons, Jacob must also trust the Lord, for he cannot be certain that he will see Benjamin again. His faith in God's providential care is revealed in the benediction that he offers before his son's departure in verses 14. He calls on the name of God Almighty, the name of our Creator, gave to himself when the Abrahamic covenant was sealed in Genesis 17, 1-14. And this is significant. Just as Abraham earlier had to trust the Lord to do the impossible, and even to give him a son in his good old age in Genesis seventeen fifteen through 21 so too must Jacob now trust God to accomplish his promise to multiply his family, as we see in Genesis thirty five eleven. even if the unthinkable happens and he loses more sons, according to Genesis forty three fourteen. See, trusting those who have lied or have otherwise wronged us is incredibly difficult. It often seems even harder to trust Christians who have sinned against us because we realize that they should have known better. But when there is evidence of faith and even repentance in a person's life, especially when we see it over time, we must again trust those who have wronged us. If somebody has sinned against you, trust them if there is evidence of repentance. Now, when Jacob finally allowed Benjamin to go to Egypt, his, his trusting in the Almighty, no matter what might happen, was no stoic acquiescence to fate. He took action to help smooth the way forward for his sons, knowing that the Lord uses the decisions of his people to work out his sovereign plan. Uh, now, Jacob understood trusting the Lord is not only intellectual ascent, it also means doing what God tells us is right, as we see in James 2, 14 through 26. And so Israel prayed for Benjamin's safe return and sent a present to the Pharaoh's steward in Genesis 43, 11 through 13. This is a wise move for those who approach royalty in these days. The honey, which would be found in the diverse places, such as rocks, animal carcasses, and trees, was an extra special treat during a famine. Jacob trusted in the providence of God, and the Lord did watch over Jacob's sons once he set them back into the land of the Nile. In our chapter today, they, they arrive at Joseph's house in Egypt. And given how their brother treated them earlier, they're rightly afraid in Genesis forty three eighteen, And they hear strange news when they attempt to pay for the grain they received for free on the earlier visit. Justice Stewart tells them he received their payment and that God returned their money to their sacks in verse 23 of our chapter today, putting into words the divine superintendence revealed in their circumstances. This reminds them of their vulnerability, preparing them to understand the depth of their past sins and to show that they have changed since dropping Joseph into the pit in chapter 37. Now, Joseph gives his brothers an opportunity to prove that they're now different when he eats with them. Their earlier sins against him when prompted by jealousy, and so he makes sure to shower Benjamin with gifts to see if they envied Rachel's other son in verses 26 through 34. His formerly murderous siblings passed the test with flying colors, eating and rejoicing freely without even being disgruntled at having less than their younger brother in verse 34. Truly, they have grown spiritually by leaps and bounds in the years since Joseph has been away. But Joseph will test their fidelity one last time to see if they have actually been transformed by the Spirit and are now ruled by love. One commentator has said that Jacob's sons demonstrate qualities demanded of God's people in Genesis 43. And two of these commendable traits are responsibility and gratitude. They are responsible in their vow to protect Benjamin in verses 8 through 10. Israel's sons also rejoice when Benjamin gets more than they do, for they are grateful for what God has given them in verse 34. Are you grateful today and responsible with the gifts that the Lord has provided for you? 
Well, I want to thank you for listening or watching today's episode of Reading the Bible Daily with Dave. My name is Dave, and today is February 12th, and we've looked at Genesis 43. Until tomorrow, may the Lord richly bless you and keep you. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Reading the Bible Daily with Dave podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the show and rate us wherever you listen to podcasts. Be sure to also like, subscribe, or follow Servants of Grace on Facebook, Instagram, X, or YouTube. We appreciate your support.